All right, we are gonna take a look at the roots today. Hi there, everyone. Coach Latanya here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Elevate Wellness. Today, I am going to be sharing with you my long journey, no retwist process, I guess. That's what we're going to call it right now. Um, so I want to give a special shout out to Cordia48. And I want to congratulate you, first of all, for um, your three month anniversary <laughs> on your lock journey. If you have any questions, please leave your questions in the comments. Um, whether it's Cordia 48 or anyone, if you're interested, if you have locks, I am not a loctician. I can only share from my experience. Okay. So I cannot give you professional advice. Um, if you need professional advice, I would definitely encourage you to reach out to a loctician. If anyone in the comment section uh, knows of a loctician that you love, reputable, please go ahead and put that person's information or name or channel or whatever in the comment section. But I have been locked for 15 years. Um, I started my lock journey when I was uh, found out I was pregnant with twins. I had already had two girls with a lot of hair at the moment at that time, and I knew combing my hair. I was in the fitness industry then too, so I didn't have a lot of time, and it just wasn't necessary for me, based you know my career, my profession, to be blowing out my hair, straightening my hair, doing twist outs, any braid outs, any of that. Um, I started two strand twist, and at the time I had my hair in a what is it? Uh, what do they call it now? It was not a relaxer. It was a texturizer. So the texturizer just kind of softened the curl pattern a little bit. And with that texturizer, it took me 18 months to completely lock. All right. So let's go ahead and get into it. So this is over. We're looking at about five weeks, I think. So four to five weeks. Um, I think it's five weeks now. No uh, retwist and I'm showing you this because I'm about to go shampoo my hair so I want to show you what it looks like before I shampoo and then I'm going to take you to uh, then I'm going to show you what it looks like after I shampoo and I'm going to show you how I uh, sometimes it is referred to as popping locks um, but that is not an indicator of just breaking the hair um, but it really is just kind of separating those strands that get entangled in the locks okay so I'm going to show you this is, I said before, I lock, I shampoo my hair about every seven to 10 days during the summertime because it's hot, the sun is sunning, I'm outside a lot, and the sun dries out my hair, especially because it's lightened, okay? Now, as light as my hair is, I do not have to add a lot of moisture all the time. About once in between that seven to 10 day, uh, span of time is how is is when I refresh it with a spray okay so I'm gonna show you what it looks like and take you in to so you can see that here right you see how this strand right here right so I will have to separate this now if I don't then over time these two will lock and then you'll see like a little bud at the end but it never had time to fully you know um, come in now this is a bud this is called a bud here a little bit more than a bud a bud usually starts at the end and it's about like this but this is coming along quite nicely but as you can see my roots you don't see a lot of my part a lot of my scalp from the from the initial parting okay so you can see that you can see the hair growth coming in here's another where they're in becoming entangled you see that so if I didn't separate and I don't I have not been separating every day but if I if I I kind of feel through I try to keep my hands out of my hair you can see another one here right so this could be a mess if I did not stay on top of it so like I said I'm not doing it every day but I'm definitely staying on top of it, okay? So I might run my hair, my hands through my hair a couple times a week just to make sure, see here, this is a good example. If I did not, if I'm not on it, this right here could definitely become one big lock here, okay? And 
this is just one side. Now you can see also my new growth here. You can see how much new growth I have. So here to here, right? This is about three inches. Um, now what I was doing is I was not locking my hair. I'll just refresh the front and leave the rest. So this is not, um, I just started, you know, kind of playing around with this. All right. So you can see throughout the head, basically, I have some hair that's tangled up. So I'm going to show you the back. I did this before, I think last week. So you can see. I don't know if you can see the scalp. I don't know what that looks like. Um, let me show you what this new growth looks like. So this is my scalp here and it's consistent with about three inches. So top. This is where it's tangled up here. Okay. Now I want to show you my, uh, the front as well. This, I think these two kind of connected so you could see, right? I'm just going to go ahead and let them connect here. Um, it's not bad. I had the lock a little bit bigger, but I think it's pretty much established. So I'm just gonna leave that. Um, and I like the patterns. I like the way the, 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 the size of the patterns here. And also on this side, so this is a perfect bud here. You see how it's, it's not as, as long as the other one. It's little, literally just the tip here, okay? And, but I'm gonna have to do some work to untangle here because it's already trying to tangle up here and here. And that's what locks do. So locks, first of all, I don't like the term dreadlocks because I don't dread anything. There's nothing dreadful about my hair um, at all. There is um, a beauty to us. There's a beauty to anyone who has locked hair. Um, locked hair is not specific to any nationality. Um, yes, it is known among African Americans, but I've seen uh, different ethnic groups um, of Asian, European, uh, East Indian um, uh, backgrounds who have it rock it and rock it beautifully. Um, so this is my lock experience. Now you can see I love when it looks like this because it's like a little, a crown of fullness. I love that. Absolutely love it. Um, and it's not, I, I, I noticed that in the beginning, uh, a couple weeks in, because I'm so used to not having, you know, my hair rubbing against my scalp. It was itchy. My scalp was itchy, but it's calmed down. And so I'm happy with that. So I did notice that. Um, but I, I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels. I'm going to shampoo it and I'm going to show you what it looks like shampooed and how I take care of that. Um, but I don't know. I think I might actually go. I said I was going to do uh, four to six weeks. So we're in week five, which means I would do uh, a retwist next week. I might go to eight weeks. Um, because I don't mind, um, the fullness. I love the fullness. Um, but I also want to see what eight weeks would look like. Now I'm not going to not shampoo my hair because for me, shampooing my hair is not just about cleansing my hair. Shampooing a hair, sh shampooing is also about deeply moisturizing or hydrating my hair. Shampoo for me is a treatment, not just cleansing the hair. Okay. Now with that treatment, I am um, deeply hydrating, getting that water deep into the locks as I squeeze it, squeeze and massage in there, keeping the scalp nice and clean. A clean scalp is really going to be vital for growing um, healthy hair. And 
um, this is what it looks like. So I also want to show you my edges because I can see where it is filling in. Okay, so you can really see more of the silhouette here, how it's filling in even more, and I love that. I love that my my uh, edges are filling in, have filled in. And then on this side as well, you can see that my edges have filled in. So this is another reason why I'm thinking that I'm gonna wait a little bit longer because I really enjoy um, the way it, I'm, I'm enjoying the way it's looking. I love the way it's feeling as well. And my hair is usually tied back. So if you see my walking workouts, I know it comes out of that ponytail quite a bit, <laughs> but for the most part, my hair is in a ponytail and I, it's not even a tight ponytail. So I'm even going to show you how I do that because it's not, um, a tight ponytail at all. So all I, what I usually do is I take a piece of hair and I'll do this part here. So I take a piece of hair and then I just wrap it around, wrap it around the hair and then I tuck it in here and I make sure it's not tight. That's it. So I'm not pulling a lot. Sometimes I just have it down and I let it rock like that. Um, I used to wear it up in a bun quite a bit a couple years ago and I noticed that it was pulling my hair um, and I did not like that. Also, when it comes to working out, although those uh, buns are really, really cute, if when you're doing stretches, like neck stretches, you wanna be careful because the weight of that bun directly on top of your head is adding weight to your neck. And so what I advise um, as a wellness coach is if you're having a lot of hair or adding a lot of hair to the top of your head for a bun, that's totally fine, it's cute. But if you're doing like neck stretches or workouts, just kind of be careful because that's on your spine. That's your neck. OK, so you want to be mindful of that. If you feel like you don't want to take your bun down, then just kind of support the bun as you bring. So let's let's use this as an example. All right. Let's just say that this is a bun. So instead of just letting the head tilt over, kind of support it a little bit. So that way it kind of gives your neck a little support as you're lengthening that neck. OK. So that is what my hair looks like without being shampooed five weeks, uh, no retwist, five weeks. So I am going to shampoo and then I'm going to show you what it looks like. All right. So my hair is uh, shampooed and this is what it looks like. So it doesn't, um, it's not soaking wet anymore. But this is the perfect opportunity uh, to go ahead and separate those um, connected locks. So what I'm going to do is just kind of go through from the back, um, start from the bottom up and kind of feel out where I may need to separate locks so I can feel there. Now, once I get to the top, I'll show you. But when it's wet, it's a lot easier. I think so this one really matted. I'm gonna have to really play with that one. Um, when it's wet, it's easier to manipulate because you can pull the string down and I'll show, show that to you as I um, work up the head. But I'm using um, a mixture of different oils, um, coconut oil with a blend of my um, serum and it does wonders for the scalp. It does wonders for the locks. It does wonders for locked hair. It doesn't have my hair feeling greasy or anything like that. And I'm applying that to the scalp. Oh my goodness, and it feels so, so good. Um, during this time of the year, it's already hot outside. I'm sweating, I'm more active, or I'm sweating more. I'm active, but I'm sweating more. So I don't need to use, or I don't use as much um, hair serum during the summertime because of the natural sebum. Our hair tends to grow faster, our meaning human beings, um, tend to grow faster during the warmer months because blood circulation uh, circulating toward, uh, um, blood circulating to, to the scalp more, which is going to help to increase uh, blood flow circulation will, uh, increase hair growth. 
during the uh, winter time, it gets colder, follicles are a little bit um, um, constricted, blood flow is a little bit constricted or not flowing as much, and so we're not getting as, mo as much. So for example, the average human will grow about a half of an inch of hair per month. Sometimes during the summer, some individuals can grow up to a month. So when you, up, I'm sorry, up to an inch. So when you saw me share about three inches of growth here, so I use this as an inch, right? So if you look at the new growth here, that's about three inches of growth, all right? So um, I've shampooed my hair, but the the untwisting I have not, or I have not been doing the, um, the retwisting. So let me show you here. So what I'm gonna do is you can see that this is tangled quite a bit, right? I have one, two, three, about three strands of hair. So I'm gonna take the oil and get it nice and slippery. And then I'm gonna start to kind of tug up just a little bit, just enough. You don't need a lot of manipulation here, but to work and, and, and pull from the strand. Now I have to figure out where it's coming from. So I'll just kind of coax a little bit and see where it's pulling from, which side is loosening. And so you can imagine, right? Just doing this, okay, so it's coming from here. Just doing this over your whole head is tedious, especially when you have locks. Now I've been locked, uh, my hair has been locked now for 15 years and this is not something that, okay, so you see I'm just, I'm literally just guiding it out. Um, this is not something that I'm, I, I want to necessarily do every day. It's okay, it's maintenance, but this is why I said in the other video that low maintenance does not mean it's literally just pulling just coming right out right because it just started i have to stay on top of it now whenever i'm doing a retwist this is what i do and i'm not retwisting my whole head but this is what i do is i'll take my mixture and put it on the scalp down to the strand and then i'll go in with one twist i don't make it super tight and that's it okay I don't even use the pins anymore. I just kind of tie it back and I go with it. And so it takes me about an hour, about 45 minutes to an hour to do the whole head. And it takes longer for it to dry. So I, whenever I shampoo my hair, I always try to shampoo during the day because it gives me all day for my hair to dry. But because I have about three inches out, um, I'm going to use my hair growth serum on the scalp because that will help to soften the hair, condition the hair, and give me um, that conditioning that I need, okay? Now, during the week, I've shared this before, I have my, my spray. Oh my goodness, this feels so... Listen, if you have not tried this lock oil, if you've not tried this hair growth serum, it is phenomenal. It The moment you put it on your scalp, you feel the difference. It's infused with rosemary as well. Um, so it stimulates hair growth. It's so nourishing for the scalp and it feels so good for the scalp. My hair now feels soft, okay? So going throughout the hair, going throughout and just kind of checking and adding a little bit of oil just throughout just to keep it from the, the strands from um, meshing together, we'll say. Checking in and it doesn't take a lot if you stay on top of it, but if you don't stay on top of it, it can really um, cause locks to really get inter intertangled and really um, disturb your um, your pattern, the lock pattern that you have. So going in, the back is not too bad. I think the front is more meshed because I am uh, manipulating it more, brushing it back more, just from, you know, day to day, um, daily routine. So just putting that in there. So good. I'm 
gonna put a little bit more of the uh, lock oil, the hair serum, I don't know why I keep saying that, hair serum on there as well. Just if you if you ever purchase this and your hair is wet, I do recommend not putting it directly on the hair because you don't want your applicator to be to be wet. Um, these oils are shelf stable. I do not put preservatives in them. I did a video before. Check out my hair playlist, but I did a video before um, and explaining the some of the ingredients that are put in these products that can disrupt hormonal balance. And if you're trying to lose weight, um, reproductive system even, if you're trying to lose weight, though some of those ingredients can truly wreak havoc on your weight loss goals and things like that. So we can see that this is really tangled. It's kind of pulling, just guiding it out. It literally just kind of slides out if you stay on top of it. So just kind of sliding it out, feeling out where it's coming from. And it will just gently lift right out of that lock. Okay. So I'll put a little bit more here. Okay, and then we're gonna do another section, just kind of feeling it out. Here's another one sliding it out so some of my locks i joined together anyway because during my initial lock journey um i had some locks that were too small and everyone is different when you're having locks you have to determine what size you want what size you want them to grow um and they're going to mine got a little bit thicker but let me show you. So here it's just gliding right out. But it really is about the hydration and the moisture so you're not breaking your hair. You may not notice. The thing about locks is you don't notice it right away. It can take years for you to notice. But if you don't have a, a, a base, a sound, um, a solid base for your locks, what will happen is they will thin, right? They'll get really thin in spaces and they can break. And so what I had to do was those smaller locks really didn't have enough of a foundation and they caught and they broke. Um, and to prevent them from breaking, I joined them together. So um, I've also had situations where they just kind of intertwined and I didn't stay on top of it. Um, and I didn't want to break the hair, so I just kind of let them, especially when my children were younger, I really didn't have um, time to do my hair like I do now. And so just life catching up. So you can see this is tedious. This is really tedious. Now you can just pull them apart and hope the best. <laughs> You can do that, but you want to really try to give it a chance and pull out. So this is why, this is really what is determining how long I'm going to go without a retwist because that hair, as that um, the new hair, the new growth comes in, it will just go ahead and lock with the other new hair, right? Because it's, especially in the front, it's being... Um, manipulate it a little bit more because I'm brushing it back a little bit more and so just kind of checking in and that's what I do so let me check the front because I know that's probably where it's going to be mostly locked meshed together so I'm trying to find where this is coming from and put a little bit more in the front This really feels amazing. I love the way it feels. Um, okay, so that's good. These two are pretty much together, so I'm just gonna let them hang together. But you see how the baseline to the foundation, it's a pretty good foundation, right? As far as the lock goes. So it, as this lock grows out, it has enough to uh, 
maintained, to be maintained. So let's see. I also found that my, for me, um, heavier locks right around the hairline also for me helped to kind of pull uh, my edges a little bit more. So when I established uh, new locks from from the edges uh, that are growing in. Now what I'm doing here is just kind of twisting it a little bit just to kind of manipulate as I pull that out, that hair. Um, and so, I forget what I was saying. Okay. Let's see this side, this side is good. Yeah, very good. All right, so that is how I separate the hair. Now, I said before, I shampoo my hair because I want to add hydration. I want to add water back into my hair. But my hair is color treated. So if you can imagine a, what is that called? If you can imagine the roof, and you know how the shingles, I think it is. You know how the, the shingles of the roof or the, the, the roofing has this this form this formation, right? This pattern where they're stacked on the other. Well, when the follicle or when the cuticle of the hair opens up, it opens up like this to receive hair color, okay? And so that hair color is going to pull pigment out, right? And if there is um, any color to deposit, let's say you have a nice auburn, type color, then it's going to deposit color in the end of that process, okay? But what happens is with hair color, with chemical treatment, that, that cuticle then can still be lifted. And so we need an oil um, of some type to come in and plug in, to come in and fill in that space. It will go down a little bit, but we still need to uh, fill that space in. And so for me, my hair, te my hair texture, for me, what works is um, castor oil, okay? So I don't want my hair to mess up my, uh, my shirt. So I use castor oil on my hair, and I'm gonna show you how I do that right now, okay? So this is my bottle of castor oil. Sometimes I will mix it with um, essential oils, depending on what I feel like I need at that moment. And when I say need, I mean, uh, let's say it's a long day and I just want to wind it down. I might put a little lavender in it. Let's say that it's, you know, the, the, the beginning of the day and I just want that inspiration. I want that um, motivation. I love patchouli. I love clary sage. Leave a comment. Uh, in the comment section, what's your favorite uh, essential oil fragrance? So I'll use a blend of, um, depending on you know what I'm feeling like that day, what mood I'm in. I love the smell. It's just a reminder of just, oh my goodness, take a breath sometimes. <laughs> and so this is what I do is I just put it in there, squeeze it into the hair. And that is how I condition my hair, literally. Now, if I'm doing a fresh uh, color treatment, I, I do have like some products that I get from the beauty supply store, and I'll show you that in another one. It's a AFOG, it's a pH, uh, uh, it's a color corrector or cuticle corrector, some sort of a color corrector or correcting cream. Now, I do not recommend in the beginning if you have locks using a cream because you can get product buildup. Now. Product buildup is really for those individuals who are using a lot of product on your hair. Uh, products that are mostly made from uh, synthetic ingredients or has synthetic ingredients in them. But I don't experience product buildup because my ingredients are um, natural. So I don't, I don't get the flaky, cakey, gooky type stuff. I don't get that in my locks. Um, and since I've started using my products, Naturally Yours, I've not gotten that. I used to get that. I used to do the apple cider vinegar uh, rinse, apple cider vinegar rinse uh, probably once or twice a year because it's really drying. Um, I would use that. I felt the results from that. I liked it. But since using Naturally Yours, I did not, I no longer need to detox my locks or anything like that. So that's another great benefit 
of training your hair to respond to natural ingredients. Now, the thing about that is I believe that um, a lot of times, and I get it, we are sold that we need all these different products and sometimes we don't, we really don't. So that's that's how, this is how simple my, pro my uh, process is. As you can see, I used a little bit of coconut oil with a blend of my natural oils to just get to the scalp. Um, I'm gonna finish and go through my oil here and just massage that in throughout the scalp, throughout the hair but I don't need a lot throughout the week. I don't need a lot because it's warmer and just kind of feeling it out. Here's another one going through before I finish up. And then I'm just gonna let my hair um, keep it down. Gonna keep it down and let it dry thoroughly. I have a fan here, so I'll let the fan kick on and cool off as I am editing this video, but this is how I, you see again, I'm just kind of pulling it, twisting it to get it out. There we go. And free the hair. Very, very good. Um, I started my own locks, by the way. I started them 15 years ago. I had been doing a lot of research before I started my locks and it was the right time. Locks is something that I always thought um, was just so um, beautiful, a beautiful transition, beautiful uh, process. And I think from, what is it, A Different World, if you remember that show, <laughs> let me know. But I watched them when I was a teenager and I love that. And um, I, I just always associated it with like someone who was deeply spiritual or a deep thinker, or philosophical, um, and yeah, it was always me. I'm always uh, was always drawn to that, but it wasn't time until I found out I was having my twin. So this is, and you can see the contrast. My hair color growing out. You can see the contrast, the dark roots with the lighter hair. That really is the look that I'm going for. Um, I really didn't want to um, color my whole head. I just wanted to kind of blend the gray as the gray comes in. So I'm pretty sure I will come in a little bit and lighten, not now, but I'll lighten just along the, uh, they call it the money piece, just along the front a little bit, just to give that, that contrast. But I don't mind um, the, dark, um, the dark roots. I actually, I like them quite a bit. So that is how I uh, untangle my untangle without a retwist, okay? So this is week five. I think I'm gonna go for another couple of weeks and um, because I like the way my, um, my edges are growing in, I like the way they've gotten thicker and I'm seeing that they're getting even thicker. It is a good time from time to time to give your locks a break from uh, retwisting so often because it does help your um, your hair. Think about it. If you're constantly every week manipulating over time, especially as we get older, our hair changes, right? And so it gives your hair time to just kind of stimulate and grow um, again. And so, yeah. That's it. So let me know in the comment section, what are your thoughts? Do you have locks? Have you gone? How long have you gone without a retwist before? Um, I'd love to hear from you. And until next time, look beautiful.